Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. You've got your favorite uncle uh, still becoming your plug when it comes to maths and science. And of course, uh, for those of you who are writing IEB, I know that, uh, you know, that period is edging closer and closer. And I hope that uh, you are quite motivated and you keep using, uh, you know, the videos that we're using to try and get yourself ahead. All right. So today I'm going to be looking at those questions that look at, uh, you know, simultaneous equations, um, you know, on laws of kinematics. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And of course, uh, you can always get in touch with us. All our information is on the description of this video. And please don't forget to hit like at the end of watching, uh, because of course I can already know that you will enjoy this particular lesson. All right, let's get right into it. So we're given two cars. They say car A and car B are traveling on a straight level track. That's point X and Y. Uh, that are three kilometers apart on the track. Okay, they say car A passes point X at precisely 10 hundred. Uh, so that's 10 o'clock. And then uh, in this case, traveling to the right at 10 meters per second, they say car B passes point Y two, at 1002, which is two minutes past 10. Okay, uh, that is two minutes after car A passed point X traveling to the left at 15 meters per second. All right. Now, um, I want to try and redraw this scenario because, of course, I want to make some illustrations uh, whilst I'm at it. Now, they say to us, uh, calculate the time when, uh, or rather, and the position where car A and car B will pass each other around the time off to the nearest minute and state the position in, in meters to the right of x. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, okay, let me just uh, change the color of that. So I'm just going to redraw or just repaint that scenario. So let's say this is position x and that's position y, right? Let's assume they'll meet at some point, uh, I don't know what we'll call that point. Let's call it position P, right? So we know that the dif uh, the distance rather between X and Y is three kilometers, which is 3000 meters. So assuming, let's say uh, that, um, you know, car A will move, let's say from point X to P, okay? Let's just say from point X to P is um, whatever distance. Let's call it D, okay? So that's the distance there. Now, of course, so it means that from point Y all the way up until P will be 3,000. Remember, that's the total distance minus D. I hope that makes sense, right? So that means that you'll have 3,000 minus D uh, between that point P there. Uh, up until, uh, in fact, you know, I think it would be much easier if I were to just change the color of that. Okay, so between those two points there. Okay, so there it is there. And this point as well. So that's 3000 minus D. Right. Now, uh, we're going to talk about car A just now. Okay. But I also want you to appreciate you know, whatever time, let's let's call the time that it takes X to get to uh, that point where they meet. Let's call it time D. OK, the time that it takes for it uh, for it to reach D. Now, I want you to just think about it. Remember, for car B, there was a two minute delay. So meaning whatever time that it takes car X to get to that point P, car B will actually take whatever time minus the two minutes for the delay, okay? So in this case, it means it would have taken car B, um, you know, uh, that time TD, okay? Minus two minutes, but remember that uh, time must always be in seconds, so that should be 120 seconds. Remember that a minute is 60 seconds, so we actually have just simply said two times uh, 60, which is 120. So uh, remember, that's the time that it took. So uh, for car 
B, so that's T minus 120 seconds. So that's the time delay that we are factoring in. Right, so now what I'm going to do is just set up an equation for car A and say, look, um, we know that the cars were moving at a constant speed of uh, car A at 10 meters per second. So you can say, well, this is the distance for car A. So I'm looking for that distance there. We're going to use our equation of motion. Uh, that's ut, okay, uh, yeah, this thing just kind of gives me, so that's ut plus half at squared, but remember that our acceleration is zero, so which means that whole thing falls off, so now, remember, we said our time is d, right, we called it d, and we said d is equal to, now the speed is 10 meters per second, so that's going to be 10, multiplied by td. So that's going to be equation one. We don't know the distance, but we don't know the time. This is for car A. All right. But now remember, now we go to car B. So for car B, what we've got exactly the same equation. By the way, why did I choose this equation? We don't have final velocity. So this is the only equation without final velocity, right? Actually, we do have final velocity. Uh, it's because it's constant velocity. Okay, uh, so uh, could we have used other equations? Um, no, because, well, the final velocity is the same as the initial velocity. Okay, right. So in this case, so what I'm going to do is for this one, we said the distance is 3000 minus D. Okay, uh, I think I may have, Okay, right. Our initial velocity, remember, in this case, we are using 15 meters per second. It's going uh, in the opposite direction, multiplied by the time. But remember, we said the time would now be the time delay in this case by 120 seconds. So it would be TD minus 120. Okay, right. Now, let's call that equation two. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let me try and simplify uh, that. So from equation two, okay, I'm simply going to say I've got 3000 minus D, which is equals to 15 TD uh, minus, so that's 15 multiplied by 120, okay, I think that would be uh, 1800, right? Uh, so that's 15 times 120. Yeah, that's 1,800. Okay, so let's call that equation 3. So what I'm going to do is now substitute uh, equation 1. So substitute equation 1 into equation 3. So it means everywhere I see D, I'm going to put that 10 TD. So this is going to be 3,000 minus 10 TD is equal to 15 TD minus 1,800, okay? Right, and of course, uh, we just do some gymnastics there, mathematically, okay? Take this to the other side, it becomes minus 15 TD, okay? So that's minus 10 minus 15, so that would be minus 25 TD. And of course, when I take that to the other side, it also becomes negative, so it will be minus 3,000 minus 1,800, so that will be minus 4,800, okay? Right, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 25, okay? And so TD would be, so we've got 4,800 divided by 25. That gives me 192. And remember, this is time in seconds, right? But they had said to us, we need to, um, uh, you know, round off the time to the nearest minute, okay? So the nearest minute, if you think about it, one minute is 60, two is 120, three is 180, right? So uh, so I, I just want you to, to think about that. So 192 is actually closer to 180. So uh, if we round it off, uh, you can even divide... Uh, so that's 192 divided by 60 seconds. 
that gives you 3.2 min uh, minutes okay um, so in this case that's approximately three minutes okay they said we should round it off to the nearest minute okay so that would be three minutes right now they said uh, we should also find out um, you know the the distance um, the position in meters to the right so it means from point X we should find out how far that is that is we're looking for D so what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to go to that original equation one okay I now have time TD okay so I'm going to substitute uh, time TD in equation one so it means that TD in this case would be um, and that's 10 times uh, TD right that's 10 TD and we know our TD is 192 so that's 192 so it means that that will be uh, 1920 right that's meters okay so it means that if we were uh, sorry that's d not td rather uh, so that's the distance d so uh, if we want to um, obviously have that in kilometers that's 1.92 uh, kilometers okay right so that is how this cookie crumbles uh, that is how you tackle these kind of questions ladies and gents um, and of course, I mean, if you wanted to uh, consider direction in this case, you could as well do that, um, you know, uh, take, let's say, direction to the left as positive, the one to the right as negative. You can do that. Uh, you'll still actually come out with exactly the same uh, answer. All right. So I want to leave it there. I hope that you were able to enjoy it and uh, uh, understand as well. Okay. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you next time. Please don't forget to like and share and tell as many of our people that, hey, look, your favorite uncle is doing the things. Okay. Right. See you guys next time. Shop, shop.